I will I will also help if possible, but I'm not going to put my name under the scribes thing. Okay, great. <laughs> Um, I think that makes sense for our first meeting, and uh, I still will look for um, another scribe. Ash, oh, awesome! All right, we're good there. So, if you are new to uh, the meeting today, uh, we have minutes, and um, I will go through and around our entire list of folks here um, and invite anybody who has any check-ins um, from their other working groups or um, just general related activities, working group activities, SIG activities um, to check in. And I use the, the, um, the attendance list in, um, in our minutes uh, to, to go through that. So if you want to be called upon, uh, add your name there. If you don't want to be called upon, uh, it's fine. All right, I'll go ahead and, uh, and kick that off. Uh, so uh, this past week, we the, the uh, co-chairs uh, have been working on getting things set up for um, KubeCon uh, North America. We have um you know the the sort of standard sessions that we've normally been doing uh the intro and deep dive um you know we're looking at um having um sarah allen um you know go through our intro uh in this section um, in this iteration and uh, we, we've um had a lot of success in recruiting uh new members uh you know uh, through these sessions, so, so they're you know very valuable, and that will be in addition to uh, um, our uh, dedicated day. Uh, so you know the intros is, is uh, related to outreach, and uh, we're going to be focusing the efforts of um, our deep dive this time in uh, giving the the first view of uh, you know kind of the the, the uh, cloud native security landscape. Um, you know that's what we're targeting for um the deep dive so very excited um you know about that uh let's see who's next mark very caught me looking away hey <laughs> no news here i just wanted to put out a uh an unwritten blog post thought which is that the design pattern for open source might turn the software development process upside down where we used to have 80% of the code written in house and 20% sitting in open source. And five years from now, what if it's the other way around? And how does that change the way we manage security? And this is not just a cloud native thing, of course, but it's a good uh, heuristic for thinking through some of the security issues that we face, which in most of the standards work tends to be relegated to uh, conversation around um, the supply chain. And I think that's kind of a, uh, a lame way of looking at this, that the problem really is, is deeper than that. The connectivity to uh, the repos in, in the public communities are, is more, uh, more direct than that. And, and, and the other thing is, um, is, is kind of related to that is the, dual responsibilities that employees have to their what we call the day job in this community and the open source community uh, don't always you know uh, offer and operate in a congruent way and that's something that we could probably address in a longer term in, in this group so both these topics are outside the scope of kubecon and so on but might be worth uh, you know a recurring reset you know once in a while where we you know circle back and and cover this nice yeah and and you know, beyond that mark i i'd love to see um you know us explore that possibly in a forum that is outside of um you know the 501c6 um initiative Initiatives that are you know directed towards uh, and, and sort of built to influence uh, the adoption of um, open source tech and kind of flip the table uh, toward 
the the needs of um, actually the companies. Uh, and there's this corporate interest there that uh, um, you know uh, actually have uh, a meaningful full place. Yeah. So when you say outside, what are you thinking? I don't know. I don't know what the right, right forum is, uh, but you know, I, I do know that that uh, if that forum exists in um, you know in directly in, a, in the, the, this sort of a forum uh, that we you know we anchor in a bias uh, that is um, you know completely embedded in that open source environment, um, whereas um, you know a lot of the um, you know, the, the interests are not necessarily, um, you know, purely open source. It's just, you know, the fact that, as you, as you mentioned, uh, we've moved from COTS to open source and there's a big, um, big difference in, you know, what we're packaging in, um, you know, and, you know, we, 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 we I, I agree that we aren't uh, actually really um, dealing with, with that problem or that, that opportunity. Right, right. Great. Well, I, I I do think that the the anchor that we have uh, for this forum for this this uh, SIG is the supply chain. Um, but I do invite you know opportunities to, to you know look beyond the, the supply chain and um, you know look at the the problem in a in a deeper capacity. Yep. Emily. Um, so quick update on SIG Security Day. From what I know, I missed our call yesterday, but the website is officially done. Um, that's pretty exciting. Uh, and we've got the minimum requirements for sponsorship covered, but you know, the more the merrier means we get more bells and whistles and have more fun. Um, as far as the supply chain ticket update, John and, um, sorry, uh, Jonathan Meadows and Santiago uh, met just before this and weren't able to make it today. Um, they tossed around a couple of ideas. They've got a note stock going between them that I've reviewed, and uh, I'm working with them to try to get the ticket updated. That way we can continue to move forward. Their goal is to um, actually do a more formal kickoff and engagement in this meeting next week. And that's all I have. Excellent. Thank you. Hillary? Hey, guys. Uh, I joined for the first time with this group just a couple of weeks ago, so still still pretty new. And I was gone for a couple of weeks on vacation, so I'm pretty much just catching up. So no updates. Welcome back. Martin? Hi, again, hi again for me. Um, I don't have anything particular to... <laughs> to uh, I, I don't have any particular as an update for this group but i could again say that i'm working on clear and that's a security vulnerability scanner for docker images and uh yep i'm adding support for photon os and if somebody has experience with it i will be glad to uh to chat with you and speak about the, this issue awesome martin remind me again you, is that for docker inc uh, it's not, uh, not uh, no, I'm working at VMware. Okay. You, yeah. Great, thank you. John? John Minerk? Sorry about that. Um, okay, couldn't find the mute button. Uh, nothing to note at this time, thank you. Chris? Hey everyone, uh, I will try to keep this as quick as possible. Um, I joined Sysdig a couple weeks ago. I'm gonna be working on Falco a lot, uh, which means I'm gonna want to get involved with security. So nice to meet everyone, I'm here to help. Let me know what I can do to make everyone's life easier. Um, and, and in general, I'm just excited about security and Kubernetes. So I imagine we'll see a lot of issues and commentary from me starting to pop up around the Kubernetes ecosystem regarding uh, security. Um, in general, Falco is going to be the one thing that I am focusing on making as upstream as possible. Uh, I wrote a blog, it came out yesterday. There's a link in the notes there. If folks want to get involved, that has all of the, uh, that's like the source of truth with pointers to all of the resources if you want to start joining 
Falco calls. Um, and again, having sponsorship here from the SIG would be helpful. Um, as far as Kubernetes concretely is concerned, we have a branch that we're working on, 682 in Falco, that deals with pod security policy in Kubernetes, uh, using Falco as sort of a, a, a controller or an operator to enforce PSP. So if you're interested in that, feel free to check it out. Uh, the question I have for the SIG is, if we wanted to propose a change, what is the best way to go about bringing that up in this forum, in this video? A change to? Uh, implementing a new API into Kubernetes. Mm, okay, um, so real quick, uh, and if this goes long, I'll put, put a bunch of the agenda. Um, you know, uh, SIG security is uh, CNCF uh, and, and not Kubernetes, so um, we explicitly do not, um, you know, uh, focus ex explicitly on Kubernetes. We're, uh, we roll up, uh, you know, Kubernetes and all of the related uh, um, cloud native ecosystem. Uh, so uh, the CNCF adopted the Kubernetes SIG uh, terminology when we landed the uh, working group. Uh, we, we, we went from uh, CNCF working groups, uh, which did you know, have a little bit more of a mental separation from the um, Kubernetes SIGs. Uh, now uh, we are CNCF SIGs. Um, so this is the uh, safe, uh, secure access for everyone uh, working group. Um, ratified and moving forward as uh, SIG security in the CNCF. So what is our involvement with Kubernetes then? Do, do we go through SIG auth or how is that relationship handled? That relationship is, um, you know, partner, uh, you know, we, we have, um, you know, the, the policy working group uh, that joined us and, and that is an overlap uh, between the Kubernetes policy working group and uh, you know our our efforts, uh, so we bridge to those working groups and you know have a number of, of the uh, Kubernetes SIGs that we actively track uh, and uh, you know have uh, readouts and reportouts from. Um, but uh, um, you know we are. You know, partnering with with those sorts of SIGs, um, there's no oversight uh, or um, you know, uh, we're, we're we're CNCF. Uh, anything that's uh, Kubernetes related is independent. Okay, cool. That answers a lot of my questions. Thank you for clarifying, Dan. You bet. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, the only other update I have is, uh, and and this is this is yet to be fleshed out. This is the reason I asked about proposing changes. Mm -hmm. uh, starting to think about and talk about adding dash dash secure to a number of cloud native CNCF tools, such Love as it. COPS, Cubicorn, CubeAdmin, Cluster Cuddle, CubeSpray, you name it. Um, and, and what that looks like and what that means for everyone. Uh, so yes. starting to come up on my end with, if in a perfect world we had dash dash secure, what would that imply and how would the SIG advertise that? Great. Yes, a secure by default or a, de a secure default um, would absolutely be something that, you know, we as uh, a SIG are uh, focused on and uh, interested in advocating for and exploring the, the techniques where um, we collectively uh, can and uh, can, you know, establish a good uh, baseline, not, um, you know, open shift it and leave it to uh, oh, the vendors will figure it out, and you know uh, that'll be uh, all you know roses at the end of the rainbow. Um, but you know, advocating for how we you know align security as the default upfront. Okay. Awesome. No more updates. Justin. Capos. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. Sorry. Um, my yeah, my browser crashed again, so I, oh, no. I'm calling in. Um, yeah. So this week we've been doing uh, quite a lot with Intoto. We have some exciting things to talk about, but I won't kind of steal Santiago's thunder on that. But um, some other big, big adoption things that have been going on there. So um, expect to hear more soon if you don't uh, if you haven't heard already. Excellent. 
Mark Fanning. Hey, um, this is just my second time joining one of these calls, so I'm still, still kind of figuring out how we can integrate with the group. But uh, I work for NCC Group, and I run a practice there that's focused on uh, containerization and orchestration stuff. So you'll see, see kind of our team members that are jumping on this call, trying to fit in and see where we might be able to help, um, you know, really wherever you guys uh, need, what, you know, some open source projects, whatever, whatever we can do. So it's kind of my, my goal in the next couple of weeks here. Great. Do you have a heading of, of what sort of activities, uh, you know, we have the security, uh, you know, assessment groups uh, or, you know, more sort of policy, uh, you know, directed efforts where we're, we're uh, you know, influencing things like, you know, Chris is discussing, um, you know, any sort of bearings there yet? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question because like by, by day, you know, as somebody mentioned before, what we normally do is security audits. Um, but kind of our goal is to go out in the community and see where we can't start doing some influencing of uh, making things secure by default and how can we lock things down in the beginning. So that's kind of why we're here now. Great. Well, I mean, you know, one, one way for you to drive that influence is, you know, also to see the assessment uh, process that we're doing. So participating in that, uh, you know, uh, sharing your insight into that process um, you know, that, that we're you know, leveraging to support the, um, the TOC of the um, Cloud Native Computing Foundation, um, you know, is, is one of those uh, directions. So if you want to sort of short circuit some things, the, the, there's a great opportunity to leverage your, your skill set uh, and uh, influence how we're, um, how we're communicating to projects coming into the CNCF. Um, and, you know, then there's, you know, individuals like, uh, uh, Mark Underwood and myself, uh, who, you know, are here more for, uh, you know, making sure that, 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 that adoption, um, you know, in the end, uh, you know, aligns with our, our broader corporate needs and, you know, establishing the, the right practices to, to make that successful. Perfect. That's great to hear. I've got a couple of my teammates that are, they're, um, kind of watching your audit process now. So that's great to hear that you're. Thanks a lot. Great. You bet. Ash? Uh, hi. So uh, I work on the Open Policy Agent. So last week I was at the Open Source Summit uh, presenting OPA um, and Kubernetes, of course. And so, um, um, just Justin, I'll be looking at the OPA assessment doc and hopefully have all the uh, issues addressed by tonight. So what's the, I just wanted to know what's the process for next week's, uh, the TOC update to, uh, about this assessment. So I don't have any idea about that yet. Yeah, I don't think we do either. Um, right. We propose this and this will be the first time we're, we're going through and providing this, but I imagine it'll be something like a one ish minute, one presentation with one slide or so. And okay. I think it will be someone from uh, SIG security presenting and just, basically summarizing what's in the document that has our findings, like our, our summary of it. Okay, but, but you still want me to update the OPA assessment doc, right? I, I want you, uh, so our, uh, it's important to do both documents because they both may be looked at. Right. The one that we produce uh, is the one that I think we'll be presenting effectively to the okay. TOC to say, this is what we thought. And then if you disagree with anything we're saying, then saying that in, you know, like, like, like making that clear so that we're kind of in consensus about this slide is, is good too. Oh, so you want me to look at your recommendation doc, not the assessment doc, is it? Yeah, yeah, it's, you know, it's the, the one and a half page-ish document that has a, some comments and stuff like that in it. Okay, sounds good, I'll look at it tonight. Great, thanks. Thanks. Siddhar? Hey, um, this is uh, Sridhar. I'm, uh, this is the first time in this group. Um, last few year. Um, briefly about myself, uh, um, I have a long Cisco career. Um, uh, I led a project in OpenStack as, uh, as a PTL. I ran an orchestration project. Um, but my current interest and in, uh, some of the initiative that we are doing, um, essentially bootstrapping an effort around security in cloud native environment. Uh, this will involve things around audit, compliance, uh, security, component orchestration, 
Um, I'm here to kind of see how things are, introduce myself, and also help out uh, as we go along. Yep, great. Coming. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, Asa? Hi. Um, I'm also joining here for the first time and I'm curious okay. about uh, the things that are going on in this group. Uh, I am right now, I'm a PhD student uh, in Max Planck Institute for Software Systems in Germany. And my, my interests are in system security. Uh, I, I came to know about this group while talking to Justin at Usenic Security a couple of weeks ago. Um, so I've, I've done some work on designing policy compliance solutions for database backed applications and also for some distributed applications, primarily confidentiality policies and stuff. I'm kind of curious about uh, what needs to be done as the, the, the general uh, landscape of application programming model, sort of even the hardware changes, particularly in the data center environment, like the serverless computing and all these things, how it's going to change. Uh, uh, you know, what we need to do in terms of also ensuring security while these applications are being designed. So, and also I'm, I'm curious about what are the policies that really people need to, uh, need to enforce uh, in the systems and to protect data. So that's one of the uh, one of the things that I'm interested in and that I've worked on and will be working on. And more recently, I've also been working, doing some work on side channels, specifically looking at network side channels in the cloud. Uh, so yeah, and here I'm trying to understand mostly about the policies and stuff which I've been hearing about so far in this meeting. Great, welcome Asta. Um, Martin, I'm gonna call on you to pick on you a bit uh, and then ask you to move. Uh, <laughs> we, we wanna... hey, sorry. <laughs> you're fine, you're fine. And I forgot, I'm sorry if I was too loud. <laughs> you're fine. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Who, me? Yeah. Uh, I think I did before. Oh, sorry, Martin. Uh, yep. Yes, you did. Uh, okay, please mute. Um, Aiden. Hey there. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Uh, this is, yeah, so it was my first time attending. Uh, I got invited by Sarah Allen, who's one of the coworker. I work at uh, the Technology Transformation Services uh, in the federal government in the US. And basically, I'm a team that uh, is involved with, you know, all cross cutting technology for our organization. So it's, you know, 300 ish technologists. And so we run a bug bounty program and, you know, something that I've been thinking about a lot recently are, you know, vulnerable app dependencies. So, you know, Ruby, Python, you know, NPM packages, things like that. And we have in the neighborhood of like 1400 repositories, like we're pretty prolific in creating them because uh, we have a lot of churn in our projects. And so I've been thinking about a lot thinking a lot about how to sort of manage those at scale and you know, keep on top of uh, upgrading and making sure things are deployed in a timely fashion, that kind of thing. So I can go into that more detail uh, if we like, but or, or if you reach out to me directly, but that's what I'm thinking about a lot right now. Awesome. I, I think that aligns closely with uh, um, you know, what, what Mark mentioned earlier and uh, yeah, abandonment of open source. Oof. A lot of pain there. Yep. Um, Robert. Hi, yeah, I posted a link uh, on the notes, uh, but I've been working on the formal verification discussion at the policy work group. So uh, anyone interested, please feedback and or collaboration is welcome. And love to see any input from the team. Robert, I'm gonna circle back uh, once we get through check-ins and you know, make sure we give some, of that, uh, some more time to that. Um, because I want to make sure that, that we're tuned in and supporting those efforts, especially since, uh, um, you know, we, we don't have, uh, you know, direct attendance by some of the members there. No problem. Awesome. Michael? Yep. Hi, uh, I'm Michael Ducey. I'm one of the leads on the Falco project along with Chris. Um, 
main thing I've been focused on over the last week, uh, which I'm going to write some design docs and a blog post about shortly, is um, slimming down our container images and making sure that we only ship what we need uh, and like uh, really thinking about can we minimize our footprint of what we ship inside of these container images so that Falco doesn't become a point of attack, especially uh, since we run Falco as privileged container uh, as well. So I've been working on that. I've had some pretty good results, uh, gotten our container images down to about 3.6% of what they were. Uh, so like 750 megs to 26 megs. Wow. Uh, so you can imagine all everything that we've been able to rip out. So that's been my primary focus as well as the six security day. Uh, but Emily's already updated us on that. Great. Wei? Uh, hi, this is Wei. Um, I started to join this meeting uh, several weeks uh, for, think, several weeks ago. So I'm still new to the DSIG. And I work at uh, Alibaba from China. Uh, and uh, my interest focuses on the Kubernetes security and the service mesh security. Uh, this week, I don't have uh, some specific, some uh, special uh, update uh, re relevant to the this this seek. Uh, and uh, it's mean it's midnight here, so good evening, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Wei. <laughs> well, if it's midnight, good morning, I guess. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, at, at 3 a.m. we go clubbing. Is that what, that's, that's what's happening? Uh, all right. Um, let's see. A uh, couple of folks in participant list. Uh, Tibi, do you want to uh, check in? I didn't see you on the attendance list. Or do, do, do. anybody else? Hey, this is me. I'm, I'm, I'm in the car right now. I'm driving, so I won't be able to contribute as much. Oh, good. Thanks for joining us. Okay, anybody else that I missed? Perfect. Well, I uh, got through attendance right at the half hour. Wonderful. Um, all right, so... Um, Robert, I have uh, a follow-up on our agenda from uh, Envoy last week, but uh, you know, may maybe uh, you know, it would be better uh, if we kick things off with the um, Kubernetes policy working group efforts and uh, you know, connecting, connecting the dots there uh, to um, you know, the, the, what the, uh, the policy working group as it relates to CNCF um, is doing? Well, speaking broadly for the policy working group, um, essentially the, the discussions have been around you know, reviewing latest updates and network security issues. So we, we sometimes talk about pod security stuff, but again, we kind of defer that to just an update from SIDAR. Uh, we've had the gatekeeper folks on uh, talking about OPA and, and progress there. So my particular focus of the last month or so has been fleshing out this discussion on formal verification around policy, and that's in the PR here, in this repo. Uh, the, the, the specific use cases there are many and varied and could benefit from, from more feedback, but the one that's kind of the low-hanging fruit and, and obvious because it's already been done in the public clouds is kind of replicating something like a Zolkova or a Tiros or a Secru capability for Kubernetes. Um, though it could easily be expanded beyond just Kubernetes, the project, and, and into validating other policies um, formally. So that's, that's the discussion I've been spearheading and has, has come to some concrete uh, decision is a strong word, but it's yeah. a question that we focus on those, those specific tools and trying to replicate that in, in an open source CNCF way. Great. And, and um, you know, j just for our context, since, uh, you know, uh, 
this is an effort you know from uh, a kubernetes sig um you know is um i'd love to see uh, a little bit more alignment and support from that sig uh is that something that that you think you can um you know bring bring to this pr uh, is is Hannibal gonna? You know, I, I see him mentioned, but I don't see him as a reviewer or plus wanting things there. I I don't know if he can attend this call in the sense of his right. time zone since he's in China. Um, yep. I can certainly discuss with him whether he can maybe review and or contribute more to this repo in terms of uh, PRs and comments. Mm -hmm. Is, is that what you're asking for, or maybe I misunderstood? Yeah, no, yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, to your point, and, and again, thank you for staying up to, to midnight to, to to join us. Uh, you know, uh, I, I don't necessarily ex expect uh, you know him to come present and show. Like, happy to have uh, you you proxy that and, and represent the the efforts there. Um, but uh, you know, since uh, you know he has been uh, spearheading that that effort, I just wanted to you know sanity check that we're all. Uh, you know, in line, and uh, you know that th that those efforts, um, you know, from that that working group are um, you know supporting these these efforts. Um, so PR 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 participation, more PR participation from um, the Kubernetes SIG uh, is all I'm asking for. Great. I, I think uh, best vehicle for that is in the next call, and we and we actually uh, reduce the cadence down. To Every two weeks instead of every week, um, but I'll I'll put on the agenda to kind of discuss alignment and coordination. Efforts and make sure Great. At least get some feedback from you. Great. Like you know, I, I'm I'm happy to to see us carry that forward. Um, you know, I, I just like you know some of that alignment. Uh, you know, up 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 front. Uh, so you know we're um, we're all walking together. Sounds good. Thank you. So I have uh, an agenda item, uh, you know, to continue the discussion uh, around Envoy. I know we, we 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 packed it in at the very end of of, um, of uh, a couple weeks ago uh, after you know, our presentation, use case presentation. Um, do you want to uh, you know dive further into that? I, I don't have any particular tactical updates on on you know what the whether the solution is effective and you know, how things are going in the field. I, my point from the previous discussion, you know, the gist was essentially that these assessments shouldn't be interpreted as a, as a one-time event that can then be relied upon for an extended period of time. That all of these types of, of issues that we see coming across the line every day remind us that uh, the assessment really is just a point in time that has a very short uh, shelf life and that if we don't have some sort of defined routine for refreshing them on some periodicity, uh, I think we, we do have a one of the service. So the concrete effect of that was this uh, issue that I've been uh, putting thoughts around what should be the formal life cycle or the official life cycle of an assessment. So do we review it yearly? Do we review it every two years? Should we review it every week? What's, what's, what's the thinking there? Should we do some sort of risk assessment or prioritization? I've, I've dumped uh, my thoughts into the, the issue and I think uh, I put a markdown document attached to that. But that's just you know, my straw man. Please, everybody should comment and, and feel free to suggest alternative theories or, or reject anything I've said. <laughs> Yeah, and so much of the the um, sort of preventative behavior is moving away from um, you know relying on those formal definitions to um, you know just observing behavior. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm intrigued in that um, you know in in the, in the change of how we're defending ourselves and how we're assessing um you know the 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 threats in the system um if that influences um you know should influence our, our behavior on um you know assessments and you know um deep al analysis uh you know of, of these things uh you know in general i 
you know, I think we we probably want to uh, you know desire to ramp up, uh, but you know the the, the trend is um, you know we don't have time increasingly to to do that heavy hands on work. Yeah, I think I think the flip side of that is is someone might take these assessments. So you know, they might say, okay, you guys did an OPA assessment three years ago. Mm -hmm. or OPA is 100% certified. I can just drop it in, no concerns, and I don't have to do any heavy lifting. I'm just picking on OPA because I know. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> um, and, you know, so the consumer of this information, our, our security assessments, might use the assessment as an excuse mm -hmm. not to do any further analysis. So that's sure. Sure. I think just putting a, a tag on it that says, hey, this is a, a shelf life. Mm -hmm. What that shelf life is, I'm not. I'm not uh, saying we have to use a particular definition, but just noting that when we publish these, that hey, we really shouldn't use this beyond a certain date. Mm -hmm. Back to my minutes. Okay, so uh, a bit more tactical uh, from uh, organizational perspective. Um, you know, Sarah Allen's been spearheading, uh, you know, has an incredible background as CEO of um, the uh, Bridge Foundry uh, of uh, you know, Rails Foundry and so many other um, you know, foundries, communities of practice efforts. Uh, and, uh, you know, through that experience, uh, you know, Sarah's um, had a lot of success in, um, you know, making sure that, that everyone, uh, you know, has a good understanding of uh, what are the uh, various formal roles. Um, you know, one of the, um, one of the roles that we are, um, are exploring as a formal role for this uh, particular group since we um, meet every week is the role of uh, a meeting facilitator. Um, so, you know, that's something that, uh, um, you know, I've um, been one of the, the, the major uh, contributors to and, and um, you know, leading up those efforts. Uh, it's something that, that I enjoy a lot. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it, it is, uh, you know, a solid uh, hour and a half block that, you know, I have to, 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 to make sure that I protect to, to make sure that we, uh, you know, go through and, um, you know, run, run a, a good meeting. Everyone uh, is, um, you know, feels heard and, uh, you know, we, we have a good use of time. Um, so, yeah, you know, one of the things that we we've been exploring is um, you know what uh, what are the, what are the, the um, you know kind of what's the kind of ladder to 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 get there and how do we uh, how do we delegate that role and begin to um, you know uh, formalize some more of the, the roles related to um, you know continuing to to support this as we uh, you know we grow. Um, you know, we, we've um, basically doubled in size since we were formally ratified. We've been going now for um, about a year and a half or so, maybe a little bit longer, uh, as a working group. And you know, we're, we're um, ratified as a SIG earlier this year, and our um, you know size and uh, responsibilities are continuing to, to grow. Uh, and uh, you know. Uh, our, our current co-chairs uh, are definitely, uh, you know, putting in a lot of work. Uh, we, we typically, um, you know, work uh, on SIG security anywhere between, um, you know, three to 10 hours uh, a week. And, um, you know, the, the meeting block uh, at, at times, uh, you know, becomes a, a, a bit of a challenge. So, um, Sarah has uh, the um, pull request 255. I'm going to pull this up and go through this a little bit. Mm -mm. Okay. 
So if you haven't seen our, um, you know, our roles document uh, and some of the interesting uh, details in it, um, you know, we, we've been leveraging um, GitHub settings to, um, to, you know, to leverage a bit more deeply, um, you know, the assignment of, of capabilities and, um, you know, have, um, you know, documented in um, the settings YAML file uh, in the .github file um, directory. Um, you know, some of the, some of the, the capabilities, and we have you know details in um, in the document as well. Uh, but this enables us to you know assign specific privileges to uh, you know triage team, to our uh, security assessment team, uh, and security reviewers. Uh, and, uh, you know, right now, uh, we have, um, you know, Sarah, myself and JJ as, uh, our meeting facilitators, uh, and, um, you know, we're, we're defining, um, you know, the, the folks that, uh, you know, have the context to, you know, run these meetings, uh, as, you know, someone who has, uh, you know, one of the other roles. So, um, you know, if you are currently in uh, an existing team, um, you know, that would be, you know, kind of an, a, an, an easy on road to, um, you know, taking up this uh, um, meeting facilitator role if you're interested. And, um, uh, and as well, uh, you know, we, we, we define, you know, an, an opportunity uh, to sort of opt in if an individual, um, you know, has, uh, you know, made significant contributions uh, and, and that, you know, addresses uh, uh, individuals like Jerry Jennings, who, uh, you know, uh, done, done a lot of work with the, the, the working group, uh, you know, worked on landscape, landed, you know, that major effort around the landscape. Um, but, uh, you know, that, that work existed before, um, you know, the definition of these, these current roles. That meeting facilitator, just pull that up in the next section. All right, facilitation roles, the meeting facilitators. And, um, you know, at a high level, it's, you know, agenda and our, uh, you know, going through our, um, you know, weekly cadence, uh, getting everybody introduced, uh, getting check-ins from uh, partner working groups and, uh, you know, going through the agenda um, and, uh, you know, looking for, for folks that uh, have regular attendance and, um, you participated as a scribe, you're basically, uh, you know, familiar with our, uh, you know, normal process and, you know, we want to make sure that you're, um, you know, if you're stepping up to, uh, join and participate in this, uh, this particular role, um, you're, you're well supported and, you know, you have a successful, uh, meeting and everyone else that's joining, uh, also does too. So I'll pause now for, for feedback and uh, um, you know, I'd like to, to hear if that's interesting, especially um, let's see, Justin and anyone else who has uh, an existing role um, that's uh, you know, defined um, today. Yeah, I mean, I'd be happy to uh, to do this. I've, I've kind of like impromptu done this a few times when people have been late to join or whatever else. But um, I think part of it that um, uh, so the preparing meeting notes with template and agenda, the agenda preparation part is a little is yep. something that I think the chairs probably should be doing except for in extreme circumstances. Yep. Um, certainly adjusting the agenda on the fly as somebody discusses something makes sense. But in general, the rest of it is is just kind of run a meeting. And I, I think that, right. you know, I'd be happy to do it. And I'm, and I'm sure a lot of us could do that very well. That, 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 that's a great, uh, you know, call out there, Justin. Um, you know, we, we you know, almost, uh, you know, uh, I was advocating for breaking out that 
particular capacity into a separate role. Um, and, you know, in the end, we, we opted in this initial proposal to keep it as simple as possible and, um, you know, uh, a singular role. Um, but I, I agree that, that that expectation, especially in the near term, uh, you know, uh, both Sarah and I have been, um, you know, working at uh, techniques to, to make sure that the, um, you know, setup time in, in getting meetings, uh, you know, lined up and the week over week, um, you know, running uh, and planning of, of meetings is, um, you know, something we're, we're um, you know, planning out over a longer period of time and sort of um, teeing up in this document. Um, so I, I agree with that assessment. You know, um, you know, we, we'll need to continue to to um, to drive that. Uh, and you know, there there's uh, um, there there you know, we're exploring some additional roles um, that could potentially uh, take on some of the uh, project management uh, sort of capacities, but. Uh, there's no, there aren't any real project managers. <laughs> like, there's no, uh, you know, folks waiting, uh, you know, to take on, you know, such roles. So, you know, defining those uh, ahead of time uh, before we have, you know, actual folks that that are participating in this SIG, uh, you know, looking for for the, those sorts of um, um, responsibilities, uh, you know, seems premature. Great. So uh, in September, uh, you know, we're we're gonna explore piloting uh, piloting some of um, um, this uh, meeting facilitation just to get a better sense of, of that. And then uh, after September, we're, we're going to um, to explore you know what what uh, um, you know a more formal schedule. Uh, so. Um, you know, Justin, uh, you know, if there's a, a, um, a week in uh, September that you're particularly interested in, uh, you know, raising your hand for, uh, that you, you uh, don't have other responsibilities, um, you know, as a presenter in, um, probably be better, um, then, you know, would love to sort of uh, work with, with folks who, who want to explore um, you know, doing this, this uh, new role um, and get everyone signed up. Would the idea be that uh, one of the existing chairs would also be on the call, perhaps to see how well this goes? That's right. In September, um, you know, the expectation is, you know, barring extending, extenuating circumstances that, um, you know, every week, uh, you know, the, you know, there, there would be a chair present and, and in general, um, you know, uh, we would expect, you know, chairs to be present, um, you know, both, both JJ and Sarah are, are traveling today. I should have called that out, but, uh, um, yes. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with it. And, and right now it looks like most of September would be open if we want to pick a date. We can also do this asynchronously off the call. Great. Cool. Well, uh, you know, uh, maybe I'll, uh, um, wait a week and, you know, get everything set up, uh, in the, the first week in September and, um, you know, pencil you in, um, for that second week. Um, does anyone else, uh, want to raise their hand to, um, to explore this role in September? Me? Hi, Chris. Yeah. Awesome. I, I'll be happy to lead a few meetings. I'm not gonna commit to doing every one of them, but I'm here to help. Okay, great. Um, I think as it stands, they, um, you know, the rule, Rules of engagement may um, not quite be met uh, since you're brand new. Um, you know, so we're going to have to, um, you know, test that water. Um, but you know, awesome. Appreciate that, and I know um, you're very experienced in you know doing this sort of open source. Uh, so 
um, I will coordinate with you to and and the um, and the chairs to make sure that that uh, um, we do the the you know test the process the right way. Uh, and I appreciate that. Yeah, totally. Okay. Uh, anybody else? That uh, covers the folks that are on this call that are, um, you know, meet the criteria. Fun bit of internal process, but uh, yeah, the uh, the week to week um, running and making sure that we we um, you know, have good solid meetings and good context uh, has own challenges. Great. Well, uh, um, that brings me to the end of my agenda for the day. Um, any final words? Otherwise, we'll give you five more minutes back uh, in your Wednesday. Uh, well, we can take it offline, but I think there was some uh, discussion on the Slack channel about firming up what the next assessment is, what the schedule looks like, who's, in, who's involved, and, and that. So, uh, happy to take that offline. But I think folks uh, who want to participate have some travel and, and commitments in September and October, speaking for myself. <laughs> so, if there's uh, any... No, that, to be done. That, that's a great topic. Um, do you want to uh, Do you want to just since you have it up, do you want to just discuss where we're at and what we think the options are? Yeah. I mean, that'll drive the agenda. So, um, you know, for, for the future sessions, so it'd be great to line on that. Sorry, so that, was that an ask to me? Maybe, maybe my audio is bad here because um, I'm all called in in this weird way. Do you want to just list the um, where we're at, like what um, we're planning on for the assessments, like where where we're at and what would be next? Oh well, I, I mean, I think I'm asking the same thing, but just looking at the assessment matrix that I put together, uh, the discussion was key cloak was supposed to be next at some point. Um, there was a Comment by Brandon some some week or two ago about maybe key clip is not going to be next. Nice. But I don't, I don't know the context there. Falco is listed after a key clip. Um, there's actually a typo on this on the matrix. I'll, I'll fix that. Um, after that, I think it was pretty much open ended. Um, I I've been in contact with some of the folks from NSM, but we haven't discussed readiness or, or schedule. Um, so yeah, I think it's really is is key clip next? Yes, no. Uh, if not, can Falco go in its place? And for both of those, do we have do we have to firm up commitments from the volunteers? So you know, bringing in uh, you know feedback from our uh, TOC representatives, uh, you know, definitely a present preference to. Uh, CNCF projects, and so you know if um, if we use that as the, you know primary decision making lens, I think that would um, you know um, support your um, proposal that uh, Falco go ahead of Keycloak in prioritization. And, and since we have some Falco folks, is that? Uh, is there a schedule or timeline you guys have in mind for when you might be uh, available for that? Or ready for that? Sorry, I was on the other line. Uh, can you repeat the question? Yeah, if, we're, if we slot you in as the next assessment uh, project, uh, are you guys ready? Or if not, do you have any kind of estimate, sense of timeline when you might be? For assessment of moving to incubation or what are we? No, for security assessment. It's. Um, I, Chris, Chris isn't familiar with the, the assessment process, so yeah. um, would someone mind dropping a link into that so that we can, I'm guessing that we should be ready within a couple of weeks, but I want Chris to make the decision. So we need to know what all that entails. So if you can 
get Chris or maybe we can take it offline and we can talk about what all it entails and how much uh, level of effort on our part it's going to take. Then we can see whether or not we are ready or not. As an action item, should we uh, follow up with a SIG via email after you, we figure out what all this is going to entail and we get a plan together? Uh, yeah, I mean, I can I can send out an email. I'll just volunteer to, to coordinate. Uh, this is Robert. Uh, okay. so, since I uh, I have Michael's uh, email, Chris, I can get your email, and then um, who else should I CC on that discussion? The Six Security mailing list. Okay, great. Perfect. Thank you, Robert. And uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, taking that offline and you know, preparing everybody and, uh, you know, then we'll align on getting into the agenda and scheduling it out uh, probably sometime in, in September. Sounds like. Yeah, that I, I'm guessing it's going to work for us, but let us just kind of confer as a team. Great. Yeah. Uh, you know, no, no, no rush, no pressure. And, you know, if the timing doesn't work out, Michael and, and Chris, um, you know, we'll work with you to, to schedule at the uh, um, next useful opportunity. All right. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great uh, week and see you uh, next week. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, all. Thank Thanks. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.